Hi guys, Phil Short here with Victory Amps, and I'm here with the incredible... <laughs> Chris Buck. I've been called worse. <laughs> we are here down at Brighton Electric to check out some really cool, exciting, brand new products. And I think it's been about two and a half years since we last did this. Yeah, I've not done anything for about two and a half years, so it kind of <laughs> sort of narrows it down, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it's flown by. We were at um, Peter Gabriel's place, Real World, um, yes. taking a look at the Duchess. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. I was not expecting that. Um, and now we're here with the full range, which is, uh, yeah, rather exciting to say the least. So, uh, yeah, I thought we'd kind of talk you through it. So we're going to dive in first uh, into the jack. So we've got a really sort of standard clean tone at the moment. So really cool, full, chimey sounding clean tone. I mean, I really like that. Where have we got the gain on channel one? So we've got uh, the volumes or, or kind of gain range. So volume one, volume two, volume one is for channel one that we run right now. We've also got the two master volumes. So I've got the clean channel set slightly louder than the overdrive channel at the moment, but we've also got a separate volume control for the embedded two notes. Uh, impulse responses, which is really, really cool. We've got the three band EQ, and that we've also got built in digital reverb, which is on all of the models, which I think is actually really sounds, awesome. It sounds really good as well. It's uh, a really nice reverb. It's kind of, in my experience, digital reverb can be a little bit hit or miss, but this sounds amazing. I've been listening back through the monitors and back through the cabs, and um, sounds fantastic. So I've turned the reverb up a little bit. Let's just hear what that sounds like. It's just a really, really versatile sounding amp. So that clean channel can also crunch up really well. So if we just wind up the overdrive or the, the gain control, turn the reverb down, get really great like classic rock. loads of really nice like top end and grit to it but i think it sounds really good as a pedal platform as well but if we turn the game back to about halfway where we originally started start putting some overdrive pedals in it So if we move on to the, the second channel, I've got a uh, TRS in, so I can just change the channel. There goes the lights, which is really awesome. Yeah, feels really good. Like it's um, it's really easy to play the gain, but also it's still really clear and you know it's really articulate, and it's got loads of body to it as well. It's like really beefy. So I think that's genuine. I think that's the thing that's most impressed me in regards to. I kind of struggle to play with that much gain. I kind of find it a little bit sort of counterintuitive under the fingers. But having kind of swapped the lead back and forth, it's a gain sound I can actually kind of get on with in that respect. Because like I said, it's articulate, it's defined this character, but there's sort of enough definition in the in between and with the notes just to sort of make it a very um, articulate sound under the fingers, which is really cool. So all of them have got um, you know a, an effects loop um, and you can control obviously the channel switching. So great if you've got a channel switcher or if you've got a, a helix or something like that that's got the ability to change channels on amps, you can incorporate that into you know, a compact digital rig. Um, I've forgotten, Dan, how many watts these are. Is it 180 100, watts? Yeah, 180 watts into four ohms, uh, about 95 into eight, and then 16 in ohms, it's about 45. 45, yeah, and we're driving a Victory 4x12 with this at the moment. 
and it's plenty loud so there's tons of tons of headroom and just like we talked about i think in the original video that we did they've made the power section that um that loud so that you don't get um any digital artifacts when the power section starts to kind of work too hard so there's loads of loads of headroom basically in that in that class d power section so you've got no digital artifacts it feels and sounds really 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 organic <laughs> So that is the Jack. Chris, why don't you take us through the Sheriff? Absolutely. Um, I've been playing for the Sheriff for the past kind of hour or so, I guess now, and uh, really enjoying it. Very British, kind of voice-inspired um, style preamp. Does exactly what it says on the tin and in spades. Um, again, two channels. You've got the Vintage um, channel. Again, does it what it says on the tin, slightly less gain, um, slightly raunchy, sort of slightly ragged around the edges. And then you've got the hot rod channel, um, which is slightly more unhinged, I guess. Um, again, getting into territory, which uh, slightly outside of my wheelhouse. But if we flick it on, we're currently on the vintage channel. Um, sounds like this. <laughs> Comparatively, if we fuck over to the Hot Rod channel, um, that's when all hell breaks loose. <laughs> In terms of feature set, again, much the same as the Jack, really. Um, got that great sound of digital reverb. Um, the two notes IRs, um, which can be, uh, the presets of which can be kind of selected from the top panel. Um, channel switching, just a great kind of sounding versatile portable amp, really. Yeah, I think this one might be my new favorite, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's such a cool sound, especially as you say, that, that channel one is, it's so open and there's all those really rich upper harmonics. It takes pedals really nicely as well, which is very cool. Kick the pedal in. That's pretty much all there is to say about that. Um, should we move on to the copper? Yeah. But, uh, let's get that going. And as if by magic, um, we're <laughs> over to the copper. Um, now I've had a fair amount of experience with the copper recently, actually. I took it on tour, at least the kind of deluxe bigger brother version of it, um, in December, just gone. Um, I've been really enjoying it. Um, again, just beautifully chimey and kind of does exactly what it says on the tin. It's just a glorious, glorious sound amp. And this has captured all those kind of fundamental characteristics of that amp, but again, in a kind of wonderfully little portable uh, package. Um, I've been lucky enough to have been involved in the two notes um, IRs as well. So um, if you don't like them, you know to blame. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, never mind waffling on, let's just get some sounds. Um, again, kind of quote unquote clean tone sounds a little bit like this. Thank you. 
again great reverb um if we flick over to the treble boost uh channel sounds a little bit like this <laughs> such a killer sounding uh, <laughs> killer sounding amp um, in regard to the treble boost it's not so much a uh, kind of two channel thing so much as uh, reimagining of if you had a treble booster hitting the front end of the amp and again captures that characteristics beautifully it's very dynamic very um, touch responsive under the fingers it's just a really cool sound there I had it uh, paired with the again the Snouse black box overdrive so if we turn that off for a second um, just that alone with the treble boost engaged Flip the pedal in. I think that's one of those occasions where I just prefer that in isolation. Just a glorious sounding amp. Uh, Phil, moving over, what have you got, man? So we have got our old friend, the first of the V4 amp series that we looked at a couple of years ago, the Duchess V4, but with some very important upgrades. We now have the built-in two notes impulse responses for this as well. The preamp is all valve, it's an all valve preamp. It's only the power section that is um, that is class D, uh, solid state. So it really does feel and respond like a proper, like the proper big brothers, doesn't it? I mean, absolutely. we've both used the the flagship versions of, of all of these models and uh, I mean, they just, they feel and sound just really, really incredible. <laughs> And then if we go to the humbucker, we'll hear it crunch up really nicely. Kind of reminds yeah, me like, of those uh, really early, like Freddie King style, um, yeah, yeah, kind of blues, blues licks, blues sounds, kind of stuff. That really nice gnarly, gnarly edge to it. So really, really cool. And of course, you guys know the trick with this by now. It you know it sounds great with pedals. So if we just stick a little bit of an 808 in front of that, and it'll just open up really nicely. <laughs> How choppy can we get with that tram? Yeah, super choppy. Let's turn it right up and... Have a go with that with some delay. Yes, you certainly Chuck can. Selena, sir. Yeah. That's very cool. That's 
So I guess the only question really left to answer is how do they sound at home? For this next clip, we're gonna be using the XLR out, using the IRs that are built into the V4s. Um, honestly, it's been really, really impressive. We're in a studio, so we've got a degree of isolation between us and the live room. So we've had the door closed all day. And when we changed over initially, I wasn't actually aware that we changed anything. <laughs> So a lot of you guys will already have seen uh, this beast of an amplifier, the Kraken V4, but we couldn't do this video without including the Kraken. I absolutely love this amp because it's actually so much more versatile than I think maybe a lot of people realize. It does do the really heavy modern thing like exceptionally well, but particularly the first channel, it's just such an incredible circuit that you can just get such a, a huge range of rock oriented tones or like even like hot blues kind of sounds. So uh, yeah, we're on channel one and everything's pretty much at 12 o'clock and uh, this, is, this is what we've got. Kind of see what I mean? It's really throaty and thick sounding. We've got all that really nice articulation in the top. But very cool. But let's check out, let's check out the second channel. So let's flip it over. Westlife tone sorted anyway. <laughs> yeah. If you're not really into the really modern metal thing, don't discard this model. That first channel sounds really, really sick. And it, we've got the gain halfway up. If we even back the gain right down on channel one, and we just boost the bass and the mids a little bit, this is what we'll um, this is what we'll get. <laughs> What happens really if you turn cool. the gain all the way up? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so we've heard all of the tones, we've played through all the amps. All of the notes. <laughs> all, all of the notes. We've heard all the sounds, but there's a bunch of features. Um, so what are the, the features? Why would we bother picking up one of these? Chris. Um, I think VRC is probably the first one worth touching upon. Uh, valve response circuitry. Um, as we spoke about earlier, I guess one very common complaint um, with Class D sort of solid state stuff is that it can feel a little bit stiff under the fingers. Uh, the VRC here acting as almost a kind of emulation of that tube sag that you would get with uh, a crank valve uh, power section. Just makes it a little bit um, kind of more squashy or saggy or any kind of superlative you choose to use under the fingers, which just makes playing it a thoroughly enjoyable experience. It really feels um, 
like, as I said, like a crank power section. We've got the uh, two notes IRs, of course, having been done by um, different people, myself included. Um, very uh, honored to have been asked to contribute some IRs to the copper. Um, who else have we got, Phil? Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Rabir has done the ones for the Kraken. Um, for the Jack, the magnificent Jack Gardner. For the Duchess, Mr. Pete Honoré. And the legendary Graham Coxon has done the presets for the Sheriff. Amazing. So there are going to be some very, very nice tones available right out of the box, which is really exciting. I think the other thing we should talk about as well is the uh, different outputs that we've got. You know, we've got the effects loop, the foot switchable stuff and all of that. But we've got two uh, line outs as well. So we've got an XLR line out, which is a direct out for the cab sim, for the two notes cab sim. So you can go XLR straight into your audio interface or straight to the desk or whatever you want to do with it. But there's also a jack line out as well. Now there's this really cool toggle switch on the top of each of them. Okay, and what that does is it gives you the option to either use a regular jack cable and access the built-in two notes impulse responses and send those out, or you can bypass the internal two note stuff. So you can go direct in with no cab sim. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to do that if you're doing some recording and you want to mess around with different impulse responses in post. So a really cool setup idea. You take the XLR out, and you have a monitoring tone, so it feels good to play. And then you also send in this line out with no cab sim on it, and then you can mess around, compare the two in your post-production. It's yeah. very cool. It's very, very cool. You know, if you're using um, Wall of Sound from Two Notes as well, you've got um, a couple of extra options in there for kind of tweaking stuff. So I just think that's really ace. I think know. that's something which nails it for me. I think, you know, it's not always something that you want to be necessarily considering of how this is going to sound in a mix. You just want to get a tone that inspires you on the spot. So to be able to go in and kind of alter that after the fact, I guess, is, um, yeah, that's very, very cool. Yeah, really. Get really a lot nice. of use on that. And then it allows you to, you know, use it with different bits of gear and stuff as well. So, you know, it's not boxing you into only yeah, one yeah. thing you know it's still uh, it's still really versatile and you can use it with different bits of outboard gear and stuff like that um, i guess the last thing then really worth touching upon is the headphone out um which is you know if you're not looking to necessarily run this to front of the house or run it to monitors or anything particularly kind of fancy you just want to be sat in your house or sat in your sofa or in your lounge or in your music room or whatever um literally set headphones in the back and away you go do you know what else we keep forgetting about is the um the power outlet now this feature has been on it since day dot, right? Because it was on the original, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the original Duchess when we looked at that two years ago, and that's a really handy feature, right? Because imagine you were putting together a small fly rig and you're going to use one of these. Maybe you want one delay pedal, or yeah. like one reverb pedal, one additional flavor of overdrive, or or even like a tuner pedal or something. You yeah, want a separate power supply for that, so you can just daisy chain those off of there, and then all the power is coming from the Kraken. Or anything else that takes nine volts, really. Um, get imaginative. See what you can power with the uh, with the copper. Get yourself a little branded LED light that you can put on your, <laughs> yeah, on yeah. your pedal board. <laughs> <laughs> what has stolen it for me when we were testing them out earlier is actually the Sheriff. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Because I love, again, like the, the channel one on that is that really articulate, dynamic sort of rock type yeah. sound which i absolutely love and i love that channel two is very much a continuation of that on that so i think for me the sheriff is uh, is my new favorite channel one on the sheriff is awesome um i've been intrigued to run uh, a stereo setup with channel one on the sheriff i think and the copper i think that would be very cool that would be very um, cool all of the mid-range um for me i think it is the copper um, as I said, I've been using the flagship Copper Deluxe for a while now, just in love with everything about it, and this absolutely nails all of the kind of core characteristics of the um, of the amp, which I love. Um, I think the treble boost sounds glorious as well. Um, yeah, Copper, Copper all day long for me. Either that or the Kraken with all of the gain. <laughs> it's, um, it's a tough one, but um, I think I'll probably edge my best and go for the Copper. 